Hey everyone. As was widely expected, the Federal Reserve held the overnight rate flat last week. Basically, there were no surprises. Over the last couple of months, inflation hasn't been falling as fast as many had hoped, and the Federal Reserve is being cautious, as they should be. But a couple of interesting things did come from the Fed meeting. First, the dot plot they released suggests most of the board members believe rates should be cut two or three times this year. One Fed member thinks the federal funds rate at the end of this year should be 100 basis points lower. Nine members think the rate should be down by 75 basis points. Five think a 50 basis point reduction will be needed. Two think the rate should only go down by 25 basis points and two think the overnight rate should stay where it is. According to Wall Street, most are betting the first cut will be in June and the second will come in September. Because the November Fed meeting is the day after the presidential election, I suspect the Fed won't reduce rates at that meeting. Wall Street has assigned the greatest probability of a third rate cut in December. Personally, I consider a December rate reduction a bit of a toss-up depending on what happens with the election. I don't mean who wins the election. What I mean is whether the election process goes smoothly and whether there are any significant disruptions after the election. If everything goes smoothly and inflation continues to come down, then we'd get a rate cut in December. But I want to take this opportunity to remind investors that generally speaking, the interest rates on commercial real estate loans are not based on the Fed funds rate. Most commercial real estate loans are based on either the 10-year treasury or the SOFR for variable rate loans. And neither of those rates are specifically driven by the federal funds rate. While the 10-year generally trends with the overnight rate, over the longer term, it can be influenced by a wide range of forces. One factor is the issuance of 10-year treasuries by the Treasury Department. If the Treasury Department issues a lot of 10-year treasuries to cover federal spending, then the 10-year Treasury interest rates may go up. The current Treasury issuance forecast for the first quarter is $816 billion, which is above average. But of course, the demand for treasury investments is the other side of that equation. And that takes me to the second interesting thing I heard from Chairman Powell last week. The Fed suggested they might scale back their quantitative tightening efforts. Basically, the Fed is the biggest buyer of US treasuries. But since June of 2022, they've reduced their balance sheet from about $9 trillion to about $7.5 trillion by letting $60 billion of their treasury holdings and $35 billion of mortgage-backed securities mature without replacement each month. The Fed's quantitative tightening has put upward pressure on interest rates, a trend that has been bolstered by the increased treasury issuance. At the press conference last week, Chairman Powell said they may slow their quantitative tightening efforts. In other words, they may start to buy more treasuries. That would reduce the upward pressure on interest rates. Chairman Powell didn't provide any details on how much they'll slow their quantitative tightening or when, but he put it out there so the market could start to digest the upcoming change of pace. Other things that can influence the 10-year treasury rate include investors' confidence in the economy, the stock market, global stability, and so on. When there's a significant flight to safety, money can quickly move out of the stock market and into bonds, putting downward pressure on interest rates. Conversely, when people are bullish on the stock market outlook, they may sell treasuries to buy more stock, and that could put upward pressure on the 10-year treasury rate. Anyway, here's my point. The Fed dot plot suggests the overnight rate will be reduced by about 75 basis points this year, give or take 25 basis points. But that doesn't mean the 10-year treasury will move in lockstep. And as a result, the interest rate investors pay to borrow money for real estate will not necessarily go down in lockstep with the Fed rate reductions. 
As the Fed makes their cuts, the interest rate on commercial real estate debt, based on historical trends, should move lower. All that said, the alignment of forces supporting the commercial real estate investment climate are looking increasingly positive. The economy remains sound, interest rates should continue to trend lower, and commercial real estate fundamentals, aside from urban office, are generally in pretty good shape and commercial real estate prices have, on average, come down a bit. These are all positive trends that should support commercial real estate activity, especially for investors who have their eyes on the horizon.